From a Bobcat operator in Ohio who thought this was the best way to outrun the police, and a state trooper in New Jersey who pulled this driver from his burning semi-truck, to a blind man in New York City who fell onto the subway tracks right in front of passing officers and much more. Here are some of the most intense moments caught on police body cam. November 15th of 2023, police officers in Glendale, Wisconsin are pursuing four suspects in a stolen vehicle. The chase began around 11.30 a.m. when an officer spotted the stolen Dodge Durango swerving through traffic and slamming into other cars. An officer up the road grabbed his spike strips and waited for the stolen vehicle. He tossed them out, hitting the car and causing it to lose control. It hit another car, skidded off the road and crashed into the median. The doors opened, and all four suspects fled in different directions. One fled toward a golf course, prompting officers to commandeer a new pursuit vehicle. Yeah, come on. Oh, let's, let's, oh, let them take it. Can we, oh. we're, we got an issue here. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, you can take that out. I would take it along the river down by your buddy. All right. Hey, man, let me get this out of here. Thank okay, you, sir. He goes through. Yes. To the right. I see something moving back there, too. Don't you see somebody? Yeah, that's our other officer. We got two of them. Okay. So the fastest way out that way is just go out one. Right okay. Here. All right. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. In the movies, police commandeer hot rods, motorcycles, and big rig trucks. But this chase through the Lincoln Park golf course wasn't as glamorous. Meanwhile, two brave golfers had already made a citizen's arrest. Elissa and Adam were on the course when they heard the sirens and commotion. They watched two suspects run onto the fairway. One fled for the forest, while the other hid inside a porta potty. Elissa and Adam thought to themselves, Really? That's where you're gonna hide? That's when Adam approached the porta potty. The suspect had locked himself inside. Adam smiled and said, Good luck. Then he tipped the porta potty over on its door, trapping the man inside. One could call it a crappy situation. Come out! Crawl out, dude! Don't do anything stupid! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Yeah. Red, I'll show you. Will you and I walk through the room? I'll show you where he went in. You guys got him? Yeah, we got him. I'm not touching him. Stop pushing gloves down. One this way. Follow me. I'll show you where he went in. Can I give him the U chap or? Uh, in the cart. <laughs> this, is this is me. <laughs> I commandeered a cart. Stop it. I'm not kidding. The arresting officer couldn't help but crack jokes and make fun of the suspect. Whew, he stinks, you can hear him say. He also refused to touch him without gloves on. Thankfully, everyone involved in the earlier car crash was taken to the hospital and only treated for minor injuries. As for our porta potty suspect, we assume his street cred took a severe hit. September 14th of 2023 was a wet day in Atlanta, Georgia. The city was inundated with rainfall, which quickly overwhelmed the drainage systems and flooded several streets. Emergency phones rang off the hook with people trapped in their cars or businesses. Atlanta police officer Ryan O'Brien was patrolling Peachtree Street when the flooding began. Before he knew it, waist-deep water covered the entire area. That's when he saw a car partially submerged in the flood. It was so deep that the vehicle started to float. If it flipped over, the driver would be in serious trouble. Luckily, a fire captain was nearby. They worked together to rescue the man from his car. Yeah. Man, 
Brian and the captain waded backward towards shallow water. The man was okay and thankful that they had saved his life. Unfortunately, he left his phone behind in the car, but that was probably the least of his worries. CCTV footage shows the Atlanta flood rising over time. The water makes it about a third of the way up the stairs in under 12 minutes. According to reports, over two inches of rain fell in less than two hours, overwhelming downtown Atlanta and the nearby University Center. This man wasn't the only person stuck inside his car. Thankfully, no one was seriously injured during the flood. Troy, Ohio is a quiet little city in Miami County. It's about an hour west of Columbus and 80 miles north of Cincinnati. Police in Troy typically deal with people committing crimes, so they didn't know what to expect when a call came in about a rogue bobcat. On January 11th of 2024, Troy police arrived at a construction site where a bobcat loader was driving out of control. The operator, Zach Henry, was a known face around Miami County. Police arrested him in 2023 for drug-related offenses. Now, he was on a joyride through the forest in his bobcat. He didn't care what or who he hit. officer decided chasing after Henry wasn't worth his life. One wrong move, and that bobcat could run him over, not to mention the blunt metal edges. According to reports, Henry sped away and crashed the bobcat into a pond. He fled on foot, and police are actively searching for him. They would have only charged him with resisting arrest, but picking up the officer in the bucket and dropping him added assault with a deadly weapon to his long rap sheet. Karol Pilichievich just wanted to do the right thing. He's a regular guy from Cleveland, Ohio. He's a father, a blue-collar citizen, and an all-around upstanding person. When he saw police sirens approaching on February 4th of 2022, he did the right thing and pulled over. But the police weren't after Carol. They were responding to a call and trying their best to navigate the snowy Ohio streets. The route took them down an on-ramp toward the highway, where Carol pulled over in his truck. Two officers passed flawlessly. The third wasn't so lucky. Two two four eight three eight. Two two four eight. I just crashed. You okay, sweetie? You okay? All right, are you okay? <laughs> Snow got me. All right, radio. We have 
<laughs> Send Parma towing. Do me a favor, sir. Come over here. Stay by your car. No, it's going to be a Dodge Ram 4x4. Juliet Al The snow got him all right. It got him while on the ramp and almost got him coming around that first turn. The cruiser was wrecked, and Carol's truck was considered a total loss. Thankfully, he and his two-year-old daughter were okay. Now put yourself in Carol's shoes. A state-employed police officer just crashed into your car and totaled it. You didn't do anything wrong. In fact, you did everything right. Insurance is going to cover it, right? A few days after the crash, Carol got a call from the police department's insurance company saying they weren't responsible for the totaled truck. That's because of a dumb Ohio law that shields police officers in this kind of situation. They're not liable if the crash occurs while responding to an emergency call. Carol would have had to pay to fix his truck as long as the officer wasn't driving recklessly. Unfortunately, no lawyers would take his case, as recklessness is hard to prove under the Ohio law. Thankfully, Carol's friends began a GoFundMe to help him raise money for a new truck. Meanwhile, the police chief declined a formal interview. Carol did the right thing by pulling over. Police should do the right thing too and help the guy out. Nearly 9 million people live in New York City. About 200,000 of them have some kind of visual impairment. Avoiding obstacles and navigating the Big Apple's big grid is already hard enough. Now imagine if you couldn't see. Suleiman Rifai is one of those visually impaired people. The 61-year-old man relies on his walking stick to get around Brooklyn. On May 18th of 2022, Mr. Rifai walked down toward the Grant Avenue station. He accidentally went too far and fell onto the subway tracks. Luckily, officers Greco and Macaluso were standing nearby. Mr. Rifai caught himself when he slipped, but couldn't hold on for long. Our officers watched him fall onto the tracks and hustled over to help. Unfortunately, Rifai landed hard and struggled to pull himself back up. That's when our officers looked right and saw the oncoming train. They pulled Rifai from the tracks with one good heave and sat him on the bench. It looks like he whacked his nose when he fell, but otherwise he was okay. The MTA awarded Greco and Macaluso with Hero of the Subway commendations. Mayor Adams even honored them at a special celebration where they reunited with Refi. He called both officers his angels and thanked the mayor for having police patrol the subway system. There's no guarantee that a civilian would have helped him. June 7th of 2023. Police in Dayton, Ohio had just spotted a red pickup truck. The driver, 57-year-old Gerald Hefner, was wanted for taking a man's life a few days prior. He'd been on the run until officers spotted him driving through a residential area. The moment our officers pulled up behind Gerald, he hit the gas and sped away. He knew why the police were after him, and he wasn't going to go down so easily. Continuing uh, north on Anna, Jan F7481, red Ford F-150. Anybody near me? Anna, second, Anna, second. The cruise he's taking off, still northbound on Anna. I'm gonna end pursuit. Sorry, you want me to leave here? Yeah, that's right. Things got hairy when Gerald sped down a narrow residential road with cars parked on either side. Next, he turned into someone's yard, trying to lose police with some off-road skills. He's continuing. Uh, going uh, northbound on. Eastbound on Hoover. On the Gunther. Uh, north on Gunther. Northbound Gettysburg. Gerald blew through red lights and stop signs as he topped over 100 miles per hour. This chase was getting extremely dangerous. It was only a matter of time before he hurt himself or somebody else. Thankfully, this chase was about to come to an end.
Hang on, go to, get him on the other side. Get him on the other side. Pull him out. Police surrounded the car and arrested Gerald. He was charged with taking the life of 48-year-old Matthew Smith in Dayton back on June 1st. After the chase, they added charges for resisting arrest and fleeing a crime scene. The judge set Gerald's bail at $1 million. He'll likely spend the rest of his life in jail. Bridgewater Township is a large community in Somerset County, New Jersey. It's home to about 45,000 people, roughly 33 miles southwest of Newark. It's a bustling city with plenty of commuters between New York, Newark, and Philadelphia. That means traffic is heavy on the connecting highways and anything can happen at any time. It was March 2nd of 2020. New Jersey State Trooper Robert Tarleton had just pulled a driver over on I-287. They were exchanging information when a semi-truck roared past them, veered left, and crashed into the overpass. You're good. Get out of here. Trooper Tarleton didn't hesitate. He knew a man's life was in danger. Trooper Tarleton raced back to his car and called fire and rescue. He drove across several lanes of traffic and pulled over in the middle of the road. The driver was dazed and stuck in the burning truck. Luckily, Trooper Tarleton wasn't alone. The sharp-dressed man who helped Trooper Tarleton was State Lieutenant Edward Ryer. He was on his way home and was driving in the opposite lane when the truck crashed. Like Tarleton, he didn't hesitate to run toward danger and save the driver's life. Our truck driver, Ron Hickman, slipped in and out of consciousness as police dragged him to safety. They rushed him to the hospital, where he made a full recovery. My family is forever grateful for them, Ron's daughter said. She doesn't like to think about what could have happened if Tarleton and Ryer weren't there that day. If you enjoyed that video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.